Today we're going to be looking at the 2020 December question stuck in a rut. So in this question, we have a 2D grid or a farm, and we have a bunch of cows who are going to be moving either to the right or up. Uh, what ends up happening is when cows move, they leave a path of eaten grass, and other cows who reach that eaten grass are forced to stop. At the end, we want to determine the stopping point or how long cows can go until they have to stop. So let's look at the algorithm for this question. So the first and most obvious solution is just to simulate. But what ends up happening is you only pass around half or a little bit more test cases if you simulate. So we're going to come up with a different solution. So in this solution, what we're actually going to do is we're going to first find all possible collisions. So what this means is we are going to basically say, if this cow is going to move down here, this cow is going to move here, this cow is going to move here, we know there are going to be collisions here and here. So the solution for this example would be this cow would move on forever and then these two would stop right here. But what ends up happening is we do have a small problem with this. And this is just, if we just simulate all of the collisions, we're going to come up with an error. So let's say in this example, this cow is going to move forward. And if I were just to simulate all collisions, I would say, okay, this cow is going to move here. This cow is going to move here. This cow is going to move here. And we're going to have collisions here and here. But this is going to be wrong. And the reason is, in this specific example, this cow is going to move forward. And they're just going to collide. So this cow is going to be moving first since it's closer. This cow is going to stop here. And what ends up happening is this cow is going to move on forever. So we need to come up with an order for collisions. So for this solution, we are going to first find all possible collisions. And then what we're going to do is we're going to schedule. So we are going to schedule the collisions. We're going to sort all of the collisions by what time they happen. An important observation note is that the cows moving to the east can only ever collide with the cows moving to the north. So this cow and this cow are able to collide. But if I have two cows both moving towards the east, there is no way they are going to collide. That is never going to happen. So we're going to use that in our program later on. So we're going to find all possible collisions, and then we are going to simulate. So I'm going to say, okay, I have all of these possible collisions. This is going to occur at time one. This is going to occur at time two. So we're going to keep a list. And what this list is basically going to contain is it's going to contain the time that these stop. So for every cow, we're going to have a time. And at first, these times are just going to be infinity. So everyone's going to have infinity. And then we're going to look at the first collision. So right here is the first collision. And what happens is this north cow is going to stop. So we're going to replace this north cow with time 1 because it collides at time 1. And then we're going to go to the next collision, which is here. And every time we do a collision, we're going to check whether or not both cows actually collide. So what this means is, let's say this is cow 1, cow 2, cow 3. So we're going to see this collision. And we're basically going to realize that since cow 1 stopped here, its stopping point is above the collision area, and therefore this collision is not actually going to happen. So what this means is that we're going to check whether or not this cow can collide, and since it doesn't actually reach this location, we know that this collision isn't possible. So I'm going to go over this more in the code, so we're going to go into that. So we're going to go over the code portion of this right now. The first thing we're going to do is we're just going to read an input. So I have two main lists. We're going to have a north list and an east list. So this is going to be really important later on. Uh, we're going to split the cows based on whether or not they're moving to the north or to the east. So over here, we're just going to read it in. And then if the direction is north, they're going to go in the north list. Otherwise, they'll go in the east list. So now that we've read in the input, we are going to create the meeting times and the collisions. So again, I mentioned earlier that it's really important that only north cows are going to intersect with east cows. So what we're going to do is we're going to say for every north, for every pair of north cows and east cows, we're going to check whether or not they collide. So we're going to have an x time and a y time. And these are basically just the two possible collision times. If they're the same, we're going to continue because that just means that they're both going to reach the same patch of grass at the same time and the problem specifies that nothing's going to happen. Over here, we're going to check whether or not the north cow gets interrupted or the east cow gets interrupted. 
So for both of these cases, since they're bound to collide, we're going to push them in the meet time. At the end, we are going to sort the meet time, and this is just going to give us the sorted array for, the, for part two. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to move on to part two, and we are going to check all of the collisions. This is the harder part of the program. So we are going to create our answer set. Again, this is going to be the list of all of the times that the cows stop. And then we're going to loop through all of the times. So I'm going to loop through all of the events. And there are a couple cases that we can look through. The first case is just neither of them has been stopped. So if MT1 and MT2, so MT1 is going to be the cow that is supposed to collide and stop during this event. And MT2 is going to be the cow that causes MT1 to stop. I'm going to refer the, to them as 1 and 2. So if cow 1 and cow 2 are both infinity, that means neither of them has stopped yet. And since this event is a collision, that means cow 1 is going to be stopped and we're just going to continue. So that's the easier case. There's also a possibility that cow 1 has not been stopped, but cow 2 has already been stopped. So we need to deal with that. So if cow 1 has not been stopped yet, then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check whether or not it's an east cow. So MT3 is going to tell us whether or not it's east. And if it is, we are going to create our case. So we're just going to check whether or not it can be stopped. And the way we're going to check this, this code, what it basically means is cow 2 we know that cow 2 is going to stop at some point. So all we have to do is check whether or not cow 2 stops at a point where it is still able to stop cow 1. So if cow 2's path is still able to stop cow 1, then we are going to mark it as stopped. If not, that just means that cow 2 has already stopped and cannot block cow 1, and we're just going to finish. So this does address our problem and our test case that we mentioned earlier. And then we're going to do the same thing if it's facing north, and this has slightly different requirements, but it also checks whether or not cow 2 is capable of stopping cow 1. And that's the bulk of the program. At the very end, we're just going to print out whether or not the cows were stopped. And then if you remember, we set our answer values to INF. So if it's still infinity, then we're just going to print infinity. Otherwise, we're just going to print the answer. I've set up the program a bit here. Since we know that the north cows are only going to intersect with the east cows, and the east cows are only going to intersect with the north cows, I've created two vectors of arrays called north and east to store the cows. I've also defined f and s as first and second, so anytime you see dot f or dot s, it just means dot first or dot second. So the first thing we're going to do is read in the input. We're going to read in n through standard input, and then we're going to create our input reading in. We're going to have a vector of pairs called pause, and then we're just going to read in our direction, our current location, and then we're going to create var. And depending on whether or not our direction is east, we're going to push our var, basically containing the first and second of our input, and then the current index into north or east. After we've done that, we're going to loop through every value. And so we're going to create a vector of vectors, or a 2D array, called meet time. And we're also going to loop through n and c being north and east. And for every north and every east, we're going to check the times in which they intersect. Namely, we're going to see if their x intersects first or if their y intersects first. And depending on whichever one intersects first, we're going to check to see if they're at the same time. So if they intersect at the same time, they just pass each other and we continue. But if not, we're going to see which, whichever collision happens first. So if the y coordinate happens first, then we're going to push back with the index 0 here. And if the x coordinate happens first, we're going to push back with the index 1 here. And the values are going to change in these three depending on whichever ends up stopping. And so after we've gotten meet time, we're going to loop through every meet time. We're going to sort them by the current time. So they're going to be from whichever one started first. And we're going to create our answer vector. This answer vector is going to store the time in which every value stops. So for this, we're going to first check to see if both answer values are currently unstopped. 
If both of them are currently not stopped, meaning their answer value is still at infinity, then we're just going to assume that the zero value is going to be stopping the one value. So when we push back to here, the value here is going to be the time, and then the one value is going to be the value stopped. So this is the time stopped, this is the current cow stopped, and then this is the cow that stopped this cow. And what that basically means is we're going to assign the value of the cow that was stopped, the time of the current time. Since we're looping through in chronological order, which means from smaller times to bigger times, if both of them have not been stopped yet, then we can assume this is the first time anything stops the value of mt1, meaning that this is the time it gets stopped. So in the case that mt1 is not yet assigned, but mt2 has been stopped, the biggest problem is if the cow that was originally supposed to stop mt1, we're just going to call them 1 and 2, so if the cow 2 was already stopped, it might not have reached the location where it would have stopped cow 1. Meaning if cow 2 was already stopped at a location before it met cow 1, then cow 1 can keep going. If cow 2 has been stopped, then we're going to check a couple things. Since cow 2 has been stopped, we're basically going to check whether or not it's been stopped before it meets cow 1. And if it has been stopped beforehand, we're just not going to update anything. But if it has been stopped after it meets cow1, then we know that cow1 still needs to be updated. So cow1 is going to be stopped at this time. This entire for loop basically tells us for every time with every collision, if the cow that was cow2 has currently been stopped or hasn't, we're just going to check to see the current location of both cows and whether or not they've stopped. And then depending on whether or not they've stopped, we're going to check to see whether this collision actually ends up stopping cow1. At the very end, we're going to loop through answer. And for every cow, we're going to check to see if it's currently still infinity. Then we're going to output infinity. Otherwise, we're going to output the time or the total amount of distance traveled. I've set up the program a bit here. So we have cat.io to read an input. And then we're going to read in n. We're also going to create three array lists, east, north, and position. We're going to loop through all of the input. And for every value, we're going to just read in the direction x and y. Then we're going to create a value called p, which is just going to store all of the information for this current cow. We're going to have the x, the y, and then the index. So if it is currently the direction east, we're just going to add it to east. Otherwise, we're going to add it to north. So the east and north array lists are going to store the cows facing east and the cows facing north, respectively. We're then going to make an array list called meet time. And for meet time, we're going to loop through all of the north facing cows. And then we're going to loop through all of the east facing cows. And for every pair of cows, we're going to get the times for when they intersect y and x. If they intersect at the same time, then we're just going to continue since they're passing over each other. Otherwise, we're going to see which one has to stop first. And depending on which everyone wants to stop first, we're going to add it into meet time. And then we're going to change the last value to either be 0 or 1. After that, we're just going to sort the current array list of meet time. Then we're going to create our answer list. And for our answer, it's going to basically store for every index the time in which that cow is going to stop. And that's going to start out as infinity. And then we're going to loop through every event since we've sorted meet time. And for every event, we're going to first check has both of the cows stopped? If none of them have been stopped yet, we're going to set the value of the first cow, or cow1, as the time that the collision happens. Since nothing has happened, this is the first collision which stops this person, so this cow is going to stop at this time. And then in the case that the first cow has not been stopped yet, and the second cow has already been stopped, then we're going to have to check a couple things. If the second cow has already been stopped before, 
then there is a possibility that this cow has been stopped before it manages to stop cow one. For example, a different cow stops it before it actually reaches the location, so cow one is not stopped. So we need to check whether or not this second cow was stopped before cow before it reached cow one at this time. And what we're gonna do is we're going to check whether it's north or east, and then we're going to change our answer accordingly. So depending on if it's north or east, we're going to get our start and end positions. We're going to change the indexes depending on which direction we're facing. And then if indeed we do find that the second cow was stopped after it was able to cross paths with the first cow, meaning the collision did still happen, we're going to assign the answer value of the number one as this current time. And if not, we're just going to ignore it and nothing happens. At the very end, we're just going to loop through. And then depending on the value of the answer, we're going to set the answer as infinity or the time it stops. And that's the end of our program.